And of course, uh, before we even talk about the emotions and how they could be this road to freedom, maybe we need to talk about what I consider freedom is. Oh, good idea. Okay, what is freedom, by the way? Now you're going to get philosophical on us, right? <laughs> no, not necessarily. But I would consider a, a, a person who is not uh, capable of managing their life in such a way that most of the time mm-hmm. they are feeling that they are in a good place. Okay. Both physically, of course, and, and, and uh, geographically, but also emotionally, mentally, uh, on the level of their mood, right. and all these things. If you... If you can manage being in a good place in all those senses, most of the time, 24-7, you probably are already extremely free. Most people are not in that kind of a place. Most people find that their days go along according to what is happening in the life. You know, so today I go to my office and uh, um, let's say I have a secretary who has not done what she's meant to do or I get an unexpected bill or um, clients cancel or I have uh, somebody calling me that's upset about something I've done in the past. The point is one thing happens after another another that contributes to me not feeling particularly good or to beginning to feel stressed or to beginning to feel angry um, or down or disappointed with myself or any of those things. And of course, this all comes through external sources. And I, you know, the way most people do, I may allow myself to be uh, affected by all of this. So by the end of the day, I've got an accumulation of a number of um, elements that have taken me to places that are not particularly good in my day to day structure. And I'm not feeling great. So I come Mm -hmm. home and maybe I need to have a a couple of glasses of something to wind down, or maybe I need to scream at somebody to wind down. (laughs) Or maybe I go out and jog and I get rid of it that way, which is already a good thing to do. Right. Uh, All I'm saying is what has happened during the day has made you anything but free. You've allowed it to make yourself anything but free, right? Correct, correct. But, you know, we don't even have to go that far yet. Right, okay, okay. I see. We're we're just describing sort of what Mm -hmm. happens. So freedom is when this is not happening. But that doesn't mean that those outer things don't continue to assault you. Of course they do. Yeah, I'm thinking about these people like um, the famous Anwar Sadat or Nelson Mandela or the man man who wrote Man's Search for Meaning. What was his name? Victor 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 Frankl. Victor Frankl, who was in the concentration camps. People who achieved freedom in horrible circumstances, in prison, in concentration camps. So really our outside circumstance, we have to try to get to that point. I think it's really hard to get to that point where you realize that it's not the circumstances that are doing it to you. But this all comes from inside, right? The freedom. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it, 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 it comes from you. It comes from a place of uh, awareness, recognition of the fact that you can have choices, and of course, recognition of the fact that you have the responsibility to yourself to make or break this day as well as every single day of your life. And if you look at it from that point of view, you realize that if you can accept the fact that no matter what happens in your outer life, you are capable of making a difference in, in what then goes on with you on an inner level and a feeling level and, a, and, a, and a, uh, an energetic level, if you like, because of the choices you then take, no matter what happened to you on an outer level, then you begin to realize how much freedom you can actually have simply because of the fact that you make those choices and take that responsibility. But how do you get there and how do emotions have or play a role in this? And I might say one of the reasons I started even thinking about doing this topic here on the air, um, I had an anonymous post on on the blog not too long ago from a woman, um, you know, very much in pain, obviously, by uh, virtue of the fact that uh, she had been married for uh, 20 years or something and and, um, had had five children with her husband. And then he basically up and left her. She must have, you know, grown a little in girth over the years because she bitterly said that he had left her for a younger, um, good-looking or professional women who earned the kind of money he did and who only ate, ate salads and who therefore were quite skinny. And uh, that, that men were selfish and that he had betrayed her and that she would never be able to trust anyone again for the rest of her life. And uh, I believe she said she was 53 
and that this had totally ruined her life. Of course, I immediately wrote back to her. Well, I couldn't write back to her because it was an anonymous post, but I posted something on uh, my on blog, blog. Right, which is um, an interesting way to, to do it. Yeah, to, to answer to her. Uh, but the the gist of what I posted to her was what I have just said here on the radio and what you said a moment ago about Mandela and Viktor Frankl and so on. It is never what happens to you on the outside that is as important as how you decide then to react to it. And in in the reaction, you find either hell or freedom. Right. I'm not, I wasn't right. going to say hell or heaven, but at least, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm. hell or mm-hmm. freedom. And because this particular woman, as long as she continues to hold on to her resentment and bitterness and, and obviously great pain and sadness at having been betrayed in this fashion uh, in her eyes, and, and I'm sure that that's true, you know, that's what he did to her. But ultimately, that simply is not what is important. Right. What is important is how you react to that. Right. What What happens if if tomorrow the person you most love is is in a, an airplane crash or run over by a car, uh, or or God forbid, uh, you know, has a diagnosis of AIDS or cancer or heart disease or something, and is given a short period of time left to live. You obviously can't control that. And if that person does indeed die and is taken away from you, what are you going to do the rest of your life? Are you going to suffer and suffer until you die? You know, be one of those um, uh, ladies that one sees in the old movies from southern countries dressed in black. There are still several right here inland, Malaga province. I know. Believe me. I know. And I know some of them. I do too. Okay. (laughs) And and they're never going to let go because they're not, they've they've been taught through the generations, you don't. I know. You keep that black on till they're, uh, and it's like, it's almost like there they're, is a sentence that they have to live out for the rest of their life. Yes. But then I thought about it one day and I never see little old men wearing black. Yeah, I know. So yeah. why is it just the women? Anyways, that would be a different. Patriarchy, my dear. Okay. Well, we'll do Patriarchy. that a different, we'll do that a different week. We'll do that a different <laughs> week, won't we? Yeah. And that reminded me, by the way, of a book I've been reading. It's in Spanish. I I know the book has been translated into English, but it's by a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, Catalan author whose name escapes me. The book is called La Sombra del Viento, The Shadow of the Wind. Mm. I'm not 100% sure if that is the English name, but if anybody is interested, I'll be happy to find out for you what the English name is. It is a magnificent book. Um, It's it's a novel. It's sort of like a suspense novel about all kinds of interesting things going on. In the Barcelona of the 50s. And the reason I find it so interesting, apart from the fact that it's well written, is the fact that uh, the author spends a lot of time talking about how Spain was then. Right, right. Not reminiscing, simply because that's the time period of his novel. And I wasn't in Spain in those years. I came to Spain in the 70s, but I was able to see uh, sort of the repercussions of the 50s when I was here in the 70s. At any rate, back to our emotions. Hold on. We just got a quick call who wanted to let us know that you don't see the men wearing black because they wear it around their neck in a tie. I didn't know that. What? No, I'm, I, yeah, I, you know, the, the, the ladies could wear a little, a little, a little uh, black rose or something. That would be better. That would <laughs> but be more they, appropriate. obviously they would not do this. They, okay. <laughs> those that do it, do the whole thing. Yep, yep. <laughs> the real, Head to toe. Yes, yes, yes. But it's true. Yeah, I've seen the men wear the little, the little black. Okay, uh, I didn't know tie. that. I didn't realize to look for the tie. All right, yeah. so that's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that, for our contributor who called. Um, so back okay. to our emotions and how they can be our road to freedom. So we've, we've kind of described what freedom can be or lack of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we can um, look a little bit, what are the emotions that I'm talking about that we can use in order to find this greater amount of freedom? Essentially, the emotions that, if you can imagine all the 